Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Not All at Once, written by Random3x. It was the 19th day of the siege of Port Stain when the assembled forces of the 4th, 6th, and 7th armies received a special shipment from the supply caravan supporting the 9th Crusade's assault on the Dark Continent. Sir, sir, his trusty aide Thomas shouted excitedly as he ran down the trenches, seeming not to notice the plumes of dirt following him from enemy mage fire. Uh, what is it? Captain Peter asked, raising a bemused eyebrow at his aide. We, we just have the thing to grant us victory, straight from the alchemists in the theocracy, sir. We will be able to strike down these way beasts with ease using this. Thomas declared, holding up a small vial of green liquid. What is that? It is a potion that will amplify our strength, unlock a human's true power. Supposedly, the Lady Pope herself explained our own bodies stop us from using our fuel potential. But this will take away the restriction for a while. So, um, this little thing will unlock our strength? Peter asked, taking the vial from his aid. Yes, sir. Thomas eagerly nodded as we began to search his pack for the instructions on its usage. While we searched... Peters popped the cork on the vial and drank the contents. Okay, here it says, uh, add one drop to two gallons of water and stir to allow the chemical to infuse in the water. Um, then allow soldiers to drink the water and the effect should last an entire... Thomas looked up and let an expression of unrestrained horror spread across his face. Did, 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 did you just drink the whole thing, sir? Why, of course I did. Such a small amount will... Peter's voice trailed off as he looked down at his fingers. They had begun to tingle. The whole world around him seemed to slow to a stop. Even Thomas's voice sounded distant and slow. Looking up, he could see that the war had ended, and it was now safe to step out of the trench and approach his former enemies. Running with glee across what had once been a no-man's land, Peter began to hear the most delightful tune as other soldiers joined him in the crossing. All were dancing and skipping. Truly, he could feel nothing but joy as he neared their former enemy's trenches. Landing in the trench itself, he was greeted by the most beautiful girl that he had ever seen. Taking her arms, and he spun around, enjoying the music. Though... He felt embarrassed for accidentally stamping on the lady's toes. It was as he spun that he could see even more beautiful ladies waiting their turn to dance with him. He had been raised a gentleman, so he guided his current dance partner down towards the blushing vixen and switched her with one smooth motion. Proceeding down the line to the rear trenches closest to Port Stain's wall, he found himself face to face with someone who made his heart beat a thousand times per second. Kneeling before her, he looked up into her eyes, took her by the hand and asked the question he, in his warrior's heart, thought that he would never ask. Will you spend the rest of your life with me? The lady immediately blushed deep crimson and nodded vigorously, almost as if she could not wait for the pair to become husband and wife. In all his years, he had never thought that in a crusade in the Dark Continent, he would find true love. Sir, Thomas asked desperately, quick, spit it out. Despite his pleas, the captain seemed to be lost in a world of his own. Quick, get a medic. The captain accidentally consumed the regiment's entire supply of physical enhancing potions. <laughs> we are finally at peace. Turning to the source of the voice, Thomas was horrified to see Captain had started to climb out of the trench. No, sir, get back! Thomas cried out, trying to pull him back before his head got blown off, only for the commander, far past his prime, to easily shrug off all attempts. Even with a combined weight of twelve men, he was still climbing out effortlessly. It is no use, sir. He is using his full strength, a private cried out as the regiment reluctantly accepted that they would lose their grandfatherly commander. Only they didn't, as he continued to cross no man's land, in what seemed to be a drunken stupor. His strange dance-like motions perfectly moving him out of the path of targeting spells. Soon enough, he had reached the halfway point. At this moment, Thomas made a call. No man over the top to help the captain! 
With a roar for battle, all the soldiers in the regiment climbed up their ladders and charged across the no-man's land, each trying to keep pace with the captain in itself, the ones nearing him, unfortunately, being blown away in a whirlwind of gore. Crap! He's dropped in, Thomas shouted, seeing him disappear from sight into the enemy's trenches. Ducking for cover behind the hulking remains of a golem, Thomas waited for the mages to slow their manor shots so that he could move forwards. Only to his surprise, they stopped entirely. What's happened? I don't know, sir, but the trench is a bloodbath. Rushing into the edge where the soldiers had replied from, he could see the trench just as he had described. It was an utter massacre. In one spot, they could see the lower half of an enemy combatant and his guts in a spiral fashion all the way up the upper half. He... he just spun them to death. A dark continent soldier cried out, pointing to the direction the conch led. Clearly, the captain's rampage had sapped any will to fight left in the enemies. Rushing down the trenches, Thomas finally found Commander kneeling to hug a werebeast, likely from a bear bloodline, considering his appearance. Thomas felt a pang of fear run through him, and the werebeast bested the commander, even in his enhanced state. Hey, 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 you die with me forever, the commander asked in a slurred fashion as he tightly gripped the bear man's arm. With one small motion, the entire limb came out of the socket and away from the body, the shock of which forced the man to transform back into his humanoid shape. I, I surrender, the bear man said, nodding to the commander as his own blood splattered across his face. God damn it, no one said that they had humans this powerful. End of story. Story number two. Humanity's Parting Gift, written by Hansen III. Hello, whoever you are. You are probably freaking out a little, reading this message. Or not. Depending on how many of you are out there, and if you've met each other. Before you get too excited. No. We aren't around anymore, and this message will be the only thing that is left of us. We can promise you that, so please don't waste any of your precious time looking for something more. We think it's best if we tell you our story to make you understand. We hope to shatter your worldview a little more gently like this, depending on how one views it. We either never existed or lived a very long time ago. You are a species of explorers and pioneers if you have found this message. We were very similar to you. When we took our first steps, or more appropriately, stumbled into the universe and of our cradle world, we expected to find other people, cultures, and minds that we could marvel at the beauty and wonder of the heavens with. At first, we found nothing, single-celled life and all that, but no one with a mouth than a big enough brains and things to say. So, we kept looking and screaming into the void for someone, anyone. But as we kept looking and listening, we saw nothing but our shadows and heard only our echoes. We never lost hope of finding someone, until the expansion rate of the universe had increased so much that any further search was impossible. The stars were receding farther and faster and we could hope to match with feasible technology, forever beyond our reach. Everywhere we had looked, we had found no one. We had to face something terrifying. We were most likely alone. And as our cradle world was engulfed in a dying solar furnace of its home star, and the heavens dimmed as the stars slowly vanished, replaced by black holes or white dwarfs, only then did we truly realize that our universe was coming to an end? And if life like ours had not shown itself by now, it would never show itself. We were the only one standing between conscious and unconscious universe. If we were to die then, in essence, the universe was to end. Not that it would matter to the universe itself, but it would matter to us. What would the point of a universe if there was no one in it to see, feel, hear, or taste it? As the end sneaks up on us in our time, as we sit in our stations around black holes to harness their energy 
and the last of us live out their lives, we can thankfully say that we are content. We had done almost everything imaginable. We had colonized planets, found solutions to every mathematical problem, and now understand how the universe works on a fundamental level. But we didn't want to be the only ones to have the opportunity to experience existence and its trials. You might be confused. The universe is coming to an end. If anything, it only just begun from your point of view. An obvious paradox. <sighs> and therein lies the crux of the matter, our friends. We do not share the same universe. You must know that as we as a species were known for two things, destruction and creation of things. In our very last days, the days this message was written, we chose to do both at the same time. It turns out that if you leave a bored species with a finite eternity of time and not very much to do, you get to the point technologically where it seems like the species has mastered the arcane arts. We are going to destroy our universe and give birth to yours through its destruction. Don't worry, there isn't much left of whatever once was. Most of its former beauty has now been replaced by a hideous veil of darkness and nothingness. All we will destroy are corpses and frozen starless planets. We had our fun, it is now time for someone else to get a play. When the very last of us dies, an automatic protocol will destroy what is left of the corpses of this universe to create yours and hopefully deposit this message in the background radiation for you to find. That is if we have calculated everything correctly. If you read this, then we have succeeded and our last wish was granted. Our wish to have someone else live. All we ask for in return is that you live a fulfilling life and enjoy the time you have left on your world. For your universe is not eternal, just like ours wasn't. See all there is to see and experience all there is to do. It is a gift from us to you. It also is our last creation, our last middle finger to the forces of nature and the basic principles of death and our magnum opus, the last human creation. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.